lovely ladies and the lovely supporters of us ladies. It's very nice to see a women entrepreneur award function with so many men. We really need all you champions to support us because being an entrepreneur, especially as a woman, is a very, very hard and lonely journey. So it's with your support and championing that we're able to get uh, where we actually want to go. So when Ravi asked me about uh, this event, she said that uh, you know I want you to come and talk um, to this room full of about 80 to 100 women entrepreneurs. I asked her a couple of times, 80 to 100, because I've mentored a lot of women entrepreneurs at juniors from IITs, IIMs, at uh, uh, accelerators trying to promote women, but getting 80 women entrepreneurs in one place is very hard because yes, I recognize that there are very few of us still, even though it's 2018. So congratulations for being able to put this room together. And thank you, it is my utmost honor because in the last many years, I've realized in this lonely and challenging journey as a woman entrepreneur, the most inspiring thing is to have role models. And all of you, whether you win or you're the nominees or you're just here to support your co-founders or you're here to support some other women entrepreneurs, all of you are role models for us. So it doesn't matter whether you win or not. The fact that you ran this business for three years and believe me, the first three years of the business are absolutely the hardest. So the fact that you survived these three years, you had the courage to go and nominate yourself for Adweta Women Entrepreneur Award, that means a lot. And I wish you hearty congratulations for that. And I really look forward to learning a lot from each one of you. So Ravi mentioned to me that, you know, why don't you talk about the global lives of women entrepreneurs today? And yes, I could share some statistics about how there are double the number of women entrepreneurs today as there were 20 years back. But statistics hardly make a difference to our everyday lives. You know, our everyday struggles of paying monthly salary, you know, our everyday struggles of trying to raise some funding from banks but them saying that you know unless you have a certain number of assets or, or unless you're able to take personal guarantee I cannot give you a loan or you know you have to show profit for three years in a row before I can give you a loan and you can't show profit before getting that funding and you know that catch 22 situation. So statistics will hardly help us with that. What really helps us and what has helped me so far is seeing role models and today we're seeing a lot more than we were seeing a few years back especially when I started. So I want to talk to you about a couple of women first who've been my role models and I don't know if you know about them. Uh, how many of you know this photo? Anybody here who knows this picture? So yeah, she is not an opera Winfrey or even a Kiran Mazumdar Shaw. But this woman there is Katrina Lake and she is my hero. The reason she is my role model is because she had, she is the youngest female founder to have an IPO at the NASDAQ last year in November 2017. At the age of 35, she built a self-made $2 billion business. Which which she created at IPO last year and this photo sums up the breaking of a lot of stereotypes. So when you have an IPO, there is this opening bell that you have to ring at NASDAQ and this picture captures so beautifully the power of women entrepreneurs because there she is with her top management which is also women and with her is her 14 month old son and at the age of 35, she managed to get there and do a tech IPO and be the youngest female founder to have done so. So, in the last five years, I myself, I've had two children and every time, you know, I would have one of those board meetings, I would really fear that there will be one of these board meetings where one of the investors on our board would say that, you know, 
what are you doing busy having children or running your company because for women this is one of the biggest things that is always held us back right we have to always choose you know you're always choosing if you're doing a then you're not doing b all our, all the men can do both but women have to always make that choice it's always about trade offs so i would always be very nervous going into these board meetings thinking that one day i am going to be fired from my own company because i decided to have children in my 30s and it's absolutely not cool for a woman to be a ceo of a company as well as have two small babies but then i see this picture of katrina lake and it gives me that power it gives me goosebumps every time i see this picture it's actually my wall picture because of the fact that i know that if she can do it then yes maybe it's five years and i will be standing there having an ipo of my own with my own two children and not worry about it the second is this does anybody know her i think it's even less likely because she is from the pre social media era so this is dean stephanie shirley she is actually somebody who is also iconic not very famous but iconic because she broke so many stereotypes so she is a refugee from the jewish concentration camp she escaped austria in uh, the during the world war and at the age of um, 35 she started a software company in uk where she was a refugee a software company in 1960s and she employed in her company only women because she realized that women are the most powerful untapped workforce that are available in the country and she realized that by employing only women i have this power which every single company because it is run by male ceos has overlooked for all these years and i can actually untap this power and use it to my advantage so she would hire women and transgenders but no men for of course about 15 years till in 1975 uk finally introduced an equal opportunities act which forced her to also hire some men and she is somebody who has always said that you know women who are ambitious always have flatter heads from being patted patronizing <laughs> you will not believe how many times i have been patted on my head saying how it up now you've done this much you're you're doing a one crore business why you want to take more risk and expand and put it all on the line you know you should focus on more important things now like you know growing your family or focus on profit why would you take risk and women have been patted patronizingly for many many years and she was too but she wouldn't she was unstoppable so she actually used to write emails to her potential clients calling herself steve so her pet nickname was actually steve because by seeing the name steve they would at least give her a meeting before realizing that it was actually a woman <coughs> and not really a man representing a software company and who would come and pitch uh, to get the business and so she having broken all these stereotypes so many years back has been an absolute role model for me and i learned a lot from her so in our company as well there are more than 300 women and it was literally a decision one day to think itne sare women hai i think for diversity ek do men ko hire karna chahiye so we have a male hr just to add diversity of our company because of the fact that you know for a lot of roles especially because our product is a women to do a product it's so much easier for a woman to do a good job than a guy and well this is very very nice to me so yes before all the dark circles and uh, you know which came alive by doing many many years of entrepreneurship and all the failures that i've had and when i started up so i have my parents are from medical background my dad is a ems my mother was from indian council medical research and they were shocked at the idea that i wanted to start up but i was very clear that i wanted to start a women consumer brand and i thought that you know when i travel abroad there were so many like interesting brands that were available this was back in 2007 and i thought i'll start a women's luxury brand back then using online to actually get through to customers and help them with their sizing etc 
I left my job against a lot of uh, resistance from my family and friends only to realize that nobody was willing to fund a 23 year old who thought that she could really create a big business without any family backing. So I struggled for many, many years and you know, like Mr. Suresh said, that once decision kar liya, lot of people ask me, do you want to go back and try taking up the investment banking job? Maybe they will still hire you, maybe they will take you at a pay cut. But ab ek baar decision kar liya and realize kiya, ki, oh, it's not as easy as I thought it was, but there was no going back. So I struggled for many years before figuring out that yes, the opportunity was there, not in women's lingerie business, but in beauty and personal care, where you could use a lot of technology to create customized experiences for women. And women was becoming a big buying force. So all the companies were spending millions and millions of dollars advertising to women because women had all the buying power, but they were not leading companies that were creating these products. So I thought, why not start FabBag as a beauty subscription service where we could use data to send women monthly beauty bags with products that were customized for them. Ran that for a couple of years and again, standard issues that happen once you scale a business up to a certain point. You reach a certain scale, 2-3 crores. After that, to take it from 2-3 crores to 50 crores is a completely different ballgame which involves a fundraising where it is still very hard for women to actually raise money. Second, hiring. So there are, it's easy to hire women because they are inspired about your building, but you also need the men. And you also need men who would be comfortable working for a female boss. So those challenges were there in the first few years. And over a period of time, we realized that we also, because we weren't very deeply funded, we also had to be very particular about margin. So last three years, we've managed to build the business profitably by also introducing our own brand, Sugar, which has done phenomenally well. And so we've so far, we've become one of the fastest growing brands in India and globally. We've reached a 60 crore annual turnover this year. And we have more than 300 female employees, more than 200 stores, including actually four stores in uh, Jaipur, in WTP, Manupasana, MGF. And there are more than 5 million products that we're currently shipping. So yes, it has been a journey. So yes, it has been a journey full of a lot of failures and a lot of questions and times where I thought to myself, was that decision right or wrong? But I guess entrepreneurs are absolutely foolhardy and don't listen to anybody. So we persevere on. And trust me, it you know, we start a business thinking that three years, five years, the IPO to karna hi hai. It doesn't take three to five years, it probably takes 15 to 20 years. But any smart person, especially women, because they have the ability to multitask, if she decides to put 15 to 20 years in figuring out what exactly is going to work and scaling her business, she can really do it. And we are talking about women entrepreneurs rising globally, but there are still, India is far behind all other countries in terms of being providing a market which is conducive for women to start business. And the number one issue which is getting fixed through forums like these is access to capital. Women have much less access to capital, especially equity and debt capital. I somehow managed to convince a bunch of venture capitalists who had a lot of questions around the fact that as a woman you're not going to be able to build a very strong team but women still face that so out of like you know even though 9 to 10 percent of businesses are run by women only one percent of those businesses actually cross a million dollars in revenue which is just six to seven crore of annual revenue and that gap for us to bridge that gap we need access to capital so we need more organized capital that's dedicated to women and as women entrepreneurs there is something that we can do as well and that is dream big and be unstoppable every time somebody pats on my head and says that you know this is good enough now don't take risk further it actually propels me to really prove them wrong because really if somebody is not laughing at your dreams then your dreams are not big enough so look back and think about it. So 
look back and think about the goals that you've set for yourself for the next one year, two year, five years. If you do not have people who are laughing at you and thinking, are you mad? There is no way you can do this. Then they're not big enough and they're not worth dedicating your life to. And once we do that as women, we start dreaming as high as our you know, men who are equal in terms of intelligence and ability. Once we start dreaming as high as them, we will create businesses and we will have 50% companies that will be owned and run by women and not small businesses but even larger businesses which have 100, 200, 500 crore and have the IPO like a Trina Lake Management Company. Thank you so much.